Hey everyone, Ben Nelson here. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. Uh, it is time for another market update for the Portland metro area. So I am gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna try to be uh, a little bit more to the point on this one today and uh, not drag it on so much, just kind of get to the meat of the information. And uh, so yeah, let's just jump right into it and let's, let's look at inventory levels and we'll talk about a few things on uh, the, the macro level, bigger picture here too, and uh, see where we might be headed here going into quarter four. Uh, well, we're in quarter four now, but looking back at um, data from, um, you know, in, uh, in the third quarter and then uh, see where we're trending towards in 2022. So uh, let's jump into uh, the Portland market action report. So jump back up here to the top. Uh, still a same old, same old on inventory, you know, been hovering right around that one month inventory level for, uh, for just over a year here. So nothing new there. Um, you will see that, uh, so new listings did uh, increase a little bit um, and there's, and pending sales uh, decreased. Um, you know, and, and looking at, so, so I'm gonna actually jump down here because this is, if you're just looking at current activity, people might start to think and interpret like, oh, look, we're at the top and we're starting to come back down. So you'll see right here, we, uh, you know, we definitely have seen a decrease in average and median sale price. It was, I'm gonna jump back up here, right about 3%, two to 3% um, from the previous month, 2% um, average, uh, almost 3% median. But I want, let's look at big picture here. Um, we're in the fall. And if you look back at this, uh, this history here, you can see that, um, you you get into June, you have this, you know, in the middle of summer, June, July, have this peak and then it kind of tapers and then you come back down. So September of 15, same thing here, you know, September of 16. And then you can see that every year that that's what you get. You get the summer peak, you get the fall, it, it, it trends down a bit. So to me, this, that's just all that this is. We've had our peak, we're coming into the fall, we're seeing a little bit slower activity, we're just seeing a pullback um, in pricing due to the time of year, which is very normal. Um, and so that's obviously represented in the year, um, you know, the rolling average, I think it was almost 20%. Now it's down closer to I think 17 um, for the average and median sale price, how much it's increased. Uh, but yeah, I, it's, to, it's absolutely, in my opinion, nothing to be concerned about and saying, oh, look, proof that we're at, we were at the top and now we're starting to pull back. It's just a, a cyclical seasonal um, pullback in pricing, which is which is expected. Um, we actually didn't really see it all that much last year just because it was so crazy um, with the pause that COVID, um, you know, forced on us in the spring. Um, it just kind of pushed us into... Um, just an extended summer almost, and and we just didn't really see. I mean, you can see a little bit there, but not not as much as you normally see. Um, so yeah, again, nothing in my opinion to be concerned about. Just kind of the normal um, the normal way the cycle works seasonally. Um, you can see here. I'm not going to spend really a whole lot more time on this. It's all kind of very. Uh, and I'm happy to send this to you if you want to see the full market action report. Uh, just shoot me an email or send me a message. Um, I can send over the full report to you so you can see the whole thing um, if you're a data junkie like I am. Uh, but yeah, your, your, uh, here's your trend, you know, active residential listings. It did tip, tick up uh, just a little bit here in September. Um, new listings was about the same as the prior month. Pending sales did come down a little bit. Um, again, all kind of seasonal seasonal stuff. Um, let's jump into news. Again, I'm promised I'm trying, trying to keep it a little bit shorter here. Uh, so let's jump over. Let's talk about interest rates really quick. Um, they have been low for a very, very long time. Uh, this is just one article, but this is there's a lot of things out there if you start looking around that. Again, these are predictions, so don't take it as gospel or anything like that. But um, this is from Yahoo Finance. Um, Market expects interest rates to rise by end of 2022, early 2023. So they've been they've been pretty stable uh, this year. Um, I mean, there's a couple times where I mean, if you read the headlines, it looked like the sky was about to fall a couple times. You know, interest rates ticking up above, you know, getting close to them, you know, three and a half percent, and it's just like ridiculous. It's so it's still so low. 
Um, we're just so used to them being so low. Um, so I don't, I don't actually know. I didn't really look at what the predictions are as far as how much um, they're expected to go up. Um, but the bottom line is the expectations anyway are that they're not going to really do much um, uh, other, you know, over the next year or so. Um, so we've still got probably at least a year, maybe a little bit longer of, of really fairly low interest rates. And then we're going to start seeing it uh, take up now. Um, that's all subject to change uh, based on what they see happening in, you know, in the economy and with inflation and all of that stuff. Um, you know, there's been some back and forth on concerns for that. They're concerned one day, then they're not. So um, if they get overly concerned about inflation, we're talking, you know, the Fed and, and what they do to, um, you know, buying bonds and investing in the economy and all that stuff. And they are starting to taper um, their purchases, um, which they've said they were going to do. Uh, but yeah, that if they if they change their plan and react differently, um, obviously that could speed up the um, the expect expected timeframes of when the interest rates are are going to go up. But they are going to go up. I mean, they've been so low for so long. There's really only one direction that they can go, and that is that is up. So um, of course, I've been saying that for I think four or five years. And here we are still at like 3% interest rates, which is great if you're buying. Um, it has the effect of that has been um, more upper pressure on pricing, of course, because people, for the most part, buy based on payment. Um, so when you have low interest rates, you can afford more, puts upper pressure on um, on your on your um, on your prices. So we, we probably will start to see if this time frame is correct. You know that's when we're going to start to see some pullback um, in pricing uh, to when when the interest rates start to go up a little bit. But um, that said, there's also I mean we could continue to see um, upward pressure from inflation, um, and we could continue to see you know other things continue to push up. You know we still have an extremely low in, uh, inventory. We still have a huge need for housing. Um, so there's a lot of supply and demand um, pressure, and there's a lot of other things that are still continuing to push that up. And if wages continue to rise, um, you know, then obviously uh, that people will be able to afford more house, uh, even if interest rates do go up. So um, and interest rates, just one piece of it. But again, at some point they are going to go up right now. The prediction is uh, probably about a year or so out. Um, let's talk about. Um, and, and I just want, well, actually, I'll get to that here in just a second when I talk about the forecast. Um, I almost just left the studio. I almost did the wrong thing. Uh, okay, let's talk about um, forbearance again really quick. Uh, forbearance has been an ongoing topic. Obviously, there's the concern of potential foreclosures, um, you know, distressed inventory coming on, on the market, things like that. Um, and I just want to kind of give you an update there. Uh, here, if I can find it, there it is. Okay, forbearance declines at fastest pace in a year. Uh, I looked back, I think there was like two and a half million or something like that in forbearance or behind back in June. I, I could be wrong on that number, but it was somewhere in there, um, give or take, um, you know, a couple hundred thousand. But uh, I believe the latest number, if I can find it in here, was, yeah, there it is. Uh, estimate is 1.3 million homeowners still in active forbearance plans. Uh, that's that's good. It's it's continuing to trend down. People are exiting forbearance. Um, this really is number one. This is a very low number. It's like two and a half or three percent of all loans. Um, it is such a small percentage of all housing units, um, even though it sounds like a lot. I mean, we're, we're 5 million housing units behind um, for what is what is needed uh, from or, or underproduced by about 5 million homes. Uh, so even if all these came to the market, I mean, it's just it, it's just a blip on the on the actual need for housing. Um, so it's this is not going to do anything to negatively affect um, the market, in my opinion. And again, you have to look at locally what the supply levels are and what the um, how many are actually in forbearance. 
Um, and then the other thing, you know, likely, so, I mean, so like if one market could be a little bit oversupplied and then if they have a huge number of this 1.3 million, obviously they're going to be affected differently than um, a market that is behind an in inventory and then they don't, they have a small number of, uh, of people in forbearance or potentially going to foreclosure. Um, and again, most of these ha owners have equity. So they're not going to go to foreclosure. Likely, um, they're going to go on the market um, as a quasi distressed seller, but but there's plenty of buyers out there looking for a home. So it's not it's not going to be like what it was back in 2008, where people were just throwing their houses up and slashing prices. They couldn't find buyers because nobody had financing and there was too much inventory. It's just not it's just not that scenario. Uh, let's look at. Uh, last thing here, I told you I was going to keep it fairly short. So, I mean, 15 minutes, I guess is short. Um, let's look at the, the forecast and the trend for Portland, uh, uh, appreciation here. Um, again, I talked about, uh, and I showed how it had pulled back a little bit on uh, this last month or so, but, um, you know, the overall trend is what you're looking at, not just the seasonal adjustments in pricing. Uh, so this is just one, and I did look up a couple others, and they're all kind of on the same um, page with what they were predicting. Uh, but this is, and they pulled this information from Zillow, uh, and it shows a projected um, appreciation rate of about 13% over the next year. So actually, I didn't even look at when this was, um, I think this was in the last, yeah, that's right. I did look, it was just last month that this was, uh, was written. So, um, yeah, so less than the 18 or 20 that we saw over the last 12 month period, but, um, that's still pretty darn, that's a lot of appreciation. So my take is that when interest rates start to go up, uh, and I did say when eventually it's going to happen. Um, you're going to have a little bit of a pullback in this this appreciation, but we're going to continue to see appreciation, just not 15, 20, 25 percent, depending on your, you know, sub market of, of the Portland metro area. Uh, you're not going to see those numbers. You're going to start to see more, you know, five to seven, maybe eight um, percent annual appreciation. Uh, which I'm not going to get into it right now, but uh, you know, people talk about, and uh, I'm not bashing the stock market or anything, but, um, you know, if you, when we're back down to, to earth with those five to 7%, uh, annual appreciation rates, uh, people will start comparing it to the stock market and their annual returns, which are better. Um, but when you apply leverage and when you only have, you know, say 20% of, uh, of it, your money invested in a property and the other 80% is using leverage, your returns are actually a lot better than that. If you want me to go over that with you, if you're curious about how that works, uh, I would be happy to, to run some numbers and maybe I'll do a follow-up video on that, just kind of breaking down a quick couple scenarios about how, how leverage um, in real estate increases your returns. So that's super awesome. And if you don't, if you don't know that and you don't look at that, you're, you're really missing out on what, um, what your true returns are when you invest in real estate. So sidebar there, um, love real estate investing. I would love to talk to you about that if you're interested. Um, but yeah, we're still, so forecast is continued growth. And I will just say, you know, I still hear uh, the, 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 I guess, catch all phrase. Uh, it can't continue like this. There's, there's, it just, it can't continue. Prices are so high. It just can't, right? That's, that's what I hear. Uh, I'm going to wait till prices cool off or come down. Um, there's just no way, there's no way logically it continue. And I will just, I will say, that by itself, the, oh, it can't possibly get higher. Look where it was, look where it is now. Uh, is that, that without any supporting evidence for it, just a like, this hurts my brain, like logic, it's twice as high as it was 10 years ago. Um, that's not a reason for it to not continue. Um, it's just plain and simple. I mean, um, if, if the data was there and things were pointing to, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It can't go down or I can't continue to go up, it's got to pull back because, you know, wages just can't take it and wages aren't growing and jobs aren't there. And, and we're like getting oversupplied on inventory and rates are, are climbing. Like, I mean, all of these things are happening and pointing towards, yeah, we're going to have a pullback and you have supporting evidence for it. Um, then sure. But 
just the argument of it's it's higher than it's ever been. It can't possibly get higher, uh, especially in an in an inflationary system and in an inflationary environment where we're just can we continue to see uh, the value of the dollar weakened and things cost more, um, at least delineated on dollars. Um, you just you can't just make that argument. You got to get outside of that uh, mind block, I guess, and in thinking that it just can't go any higher just because and actually look at the data and make an educated decision based on on um, not just history of where prices were, but where they're probably going based on um, you know all of those data points. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, I, I'm not saying again that it can't pull back or there's some something crazy can't happen um, or that at some point it's gonna slow down. Again, I kind of touched on that. Yeah, when interest rates go up, and some of those things, but um, but yeah, I just don't want you to get. I just don't want to get trapped in the in the mindset of it can't possibly keep going up because it just can't, right? Um, that's not good logic. That's not good reasoning. It's just an argument against something um, that maybe you just don't understand or you're just not knowing what to look at, and it's just um, kind of kind of an emotional response of uh, I just I can't see myself paying that much for that because. Um, it just, that's what, it wasn't worth that before. And and you just don't see the value there and you don't see how it can continue. But again, I encourage you to look at the data and the information. And again, uh, happy to talk to you about any of this stuff. If you want to reach out, I can send you the full market action report. I can send you some other uh, data points I'm looking at. I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. Again, break down uh, some investment stuff if you're looking at that and, and how leverage works and how that increases returns. Um, and anything else that can be helpful to you. So uh, again, hopefully that was informative. I think I went shorter than uh, my last ones. Uh, hopefully it was it was informational to you and, and helpful. If I can be of any help in your real estate needs, I'd love to do that. Feel free to reach out anytime. Um, love to connect and chat and uh, do whatever I can to serve you. So until next time, make it a great rest of the day.